Hello and welcome to Quick Learning Hub. Today we are going to discuss very interesting topic Coder to Developer. This is a beginner content. This is intended for the students, people who are stepping into the development career or who have very little experience with the development life cycle. So let's quickly compare what Coder and Developer thinks like. So for example, Coder has the approach of thinking of small problems, solving it via the code, while developers think of a big picture, try and understand what the business actually wants. While coder focus on individual tasks, user story or a particular task is assigned to a coder, while a developer thinks of a broader prospects. For example, is the code that I'm writing is maintainable, reusable? So this is how the thought process differs. Coder is more focused on writing the code and testing it like via the unit test and delivering it and closing the task assigned to it and then try to move on to the next task. While develop try and understand different part of the processes, software development is not only about algorithm data structure and programming languages. Software development involves a lot many aspects. We are going to cover very few of them here which are very crucial to the developers. The coder initially when they are in college or they are becoming intern or they are stepping into the career, they have major focus on algorithm and data structure because they, this is the major part of many interviews and one of the programming languages which he or she is comfortable with but for a software developer that is not enough that is just the beginning of the career so now let's say as a coder you already know this basics then then to enter into the ecosystem you need to have like the other attributes as well as a software development what is the role for algorithm and data structure as most of the interviews you will go and face this particular discussion so algorithm you might already be knowing that it's it's already some efficient solution of some complex problems so you try and understand the existing algorithm and try to fit it in your problem statement that okay is this particular al algorithm is actually solving my problem efficiently and effectively that's where the algorithm comes into the picture sometimes you may face situation when you have to have your own custom algorithms to solve a business specific problem or maybe you need to merge multiple algorithms to arrive at a particular solution now data structure how you are organizing your data if your data is organized in a manner that suffice your business use case let's say maybe it's more of a retrieval or more of a archiving more of a very faster retrieval it it all depends on that and then based on your requirement you are going to choose the data structure that makes your cost and performance meet your metrics if you choose right algorithm and right data structure you will have improved performance better memory utilization so if you have less memory and less consumption of cpus you will be like definitely cost effective and then the system will be easily scalable maintainable similarly for programming language programming language are like how you are communicating with computer how you are instructing your computer to do certain things the choice of programming language depends on your use case are you going to work on the back-end servers or are you going to do some data analytics or are you on the front-end side of the development so for example the javascript type scripts there are use cases when you want to write websites web applications when you choose a programming language you just not only think of the particular use case but you also think of a whole ecosystem for example when you are going for web development then you also think like what are the available libraries what are the available frameworks that can support the faster and the easier development for you rather than you turning wheel from like scratch javascript has like a lot of libraries so react redux and other stuff similarly other frameworks like angular is also available so you have to decide like which framework will suit or suffice or what is the requirement and then you go deep into that one of the things and then understand the ecosystem not only like i know javascript that will not suffice you or that will not lead to grow in your career now python has like a lot of uh, whole ecosystem so if you want to go for data analytics or machine learning and other stuff or, or like automation the python is is a way to go java is one of the most popular languages for enterprise scale and service store application java has a very big ecosystem in in terms of other frameworks and libraries a lot of common util libraries and a lot of frameworks spring and like from the data perspective jpa hibernate and lot as a developer you have to think of the whole software development life cycle so the software development life cycle starts like maybe it's not a single day it's like months so let's say for example in our task we are doing multiple steps planning which may take a month and then analysis design implementation 
then testing and then deployment and then maintenance so you may have additional you may have something missing in in your software development life cycle but more or less it's around this tasks planning analysis design implementation testing deployment and maintenance as a coder you don't focus on all of software developer you should think of a planning how the whole project scope how the project goals and objectives are being set up the analysis phase when you have the requirements or gathering the requirement including the the business owner stakeholders who are actually creating the use cases and the functional requirement so this is the analysis phase design phase where most of like your senior people team leads architects they creating the software architecture including a high level design so this is where you as a developer start thinking and maybe if possible start taking part in those meetings and understand like how they are deciding to which to go for which technology and which frameworks now the implementation phase in this phase we actually go and write code we try and create reusable components application that we want to deliver and then you think of some reusable component that can be used and then you prepare some common modules that can be used by other developers within the team you definitely need to test your own code integrating it with the additional piece of code that has been solving the problem so that's when the testing phase come into the picture then deployment phase once you have the whole code running then you deploy so that somebody else or maybe like a user can do testing on the and give us the feedback and maintenance phase is more or less after delivery we need to think of a maintenance phase in from the beginning of the career that we have quality maintained so that during maintenance anybody who wants to include a new feature or want to do any bug fixing should be easy as a developer you need to broaden your horizon you need to think above and beyond implementation and testing version control allows you to manage the code and tr track the changes to your code you can revert back to certain a uh, previous commit or certain previous version this also allows you to review the code before merging your code the more effective you are in using this version control tools the more faster you will be and the more confident you will be because you will not be worried about merging your code understanding of version control tools so that you can be effective and faster in your software development life cycle so there are some popular version control tools you might be already using might be aware of gate as in bitbucket every cloud provider have their own version control tools and if you are mo moving to cloud then may start using those provided by let's say aws providing their own google providing their own based on like on which ecosystem you are you might be using some other version control tool as well will be very solid if you have any of one version control tool in your portfolio so moving forward people do take software testing very light in the early stage of their career but testing is very essential if you have proper testing that ensures the code quality that ensures the confidence and reliability that in enables the improvement continuous improvement and in long run it always saves time and money let me give you a very simple example some requirements changing so now you need to change your code proper test cases when i say proper test cases sometimes you just write test cases just to have the code coverage coder thinks okay i have to have code coverage and they write test cases which doesn't make sense but it's not actually covering the business functionality so when you are writing the test cases be sure to write test cases which actually covers the business functionality or so let's say now you have a proper unit test case and then we were discussing a new feature or the requirement changes and now once you have to change certain code as you are aware that okay all the the unit test cases are properly written and if i make any changes and all my test cases are passing then i no need to worry about okay if this mingling with the existing other piece of code so that's where you will be very confident if you have the proper test cases written but when you grow in your career you need to think of a broader picture as well so not only unit testing you you may have to think of integration testing regression testing also from the performance testing acceptance testing and many other testing aspects so let me give you a scenario you did your best and you did unit testing but now the whole application is deployed and the performance is very very bad maybe certain piece of code is behaving weird when it is integrated with other piece of code so that's where the integration testing performance testing comes into the picture also there are security testing and there are a lot of other aspects of testing we are moving from coder to developer we need to expand our horizon from unit testing to slowly integration testing probably automation testing but what i want to highlight here is testing is very essential from a development perspective do not take it light because 
it will going to harm you in long run you will not be confident of making any changes to your code very interesting topic agile methodology which emphasize on collaboration flexibility and rapid iteration it doesn't say rapid development lot of students i meet they say it's rapid development it's not rapid development just be mindful of that it's rapid iteration means it's like you are doing something you are showing it getting the feedback and building on top of it so you get the feedback faster most popular agile frameworks are scrum and kanban these days most of the teams are adopting scrum and scrum also has variety of scrums so if you are interested in any of the topics related to any of my previous topic or this topic let me know i can make a detailed video on very specific topic as a developer you should be because you now are not working in silos you as a developer work in teams and you need to always have collaboration and you need to follow this framework's set of rules so that you are working in sync with your team and with the requirements very very important very hot topic from couple of years devops development and operations working together basically that's how i understand devops in, in the past development teams and operation teams were way apart so development team used to deliver something and then the operations team or the support teams who are actually facing the customer were not aware of ongoing changes or the changes that has been delivered or the releases or the new features that are coming so there was a major gap between development and the operations teams a concept to bring the development and it operations team to collaborate more so that operation teams knows what's going in the development and can assure client what is coming in the next release feedbacks from the client that ops can give us and that we can take up in our software development cycles so that's how the this reliability of software delivery improved and there are improvement in the way how the development team started delivering faster when that um, wide range of tools and technologies came so ci cd pipelines and containerization cloud computing and this stuff why devops is so popular and so important in software development life cycle to give you a very brief idea in past we used to have very slow delivery cycles we used to deliver like once in a month because that's where we were not that agile in that time now we are following as we were discussing agile methodologies so you can accept changes very frequently the delivery cycles are now way shorter you may have delivery per day and to do that you cannot rely on creating your manual jar manual images promoting everything manually and then so you will end up doing only the deployment if you are doing manually so that's where the ci cd came into the picture it's like more or less one click deployment devops plays very important role it improves the quality it improves efficiency it reduces the time to market it has better collaboration because you also can include multiple stages in your uh, deployment cycle as we were discussing performance so you can include performance testing while using the ci cd pipeline you can also include other kind of security aspect as well which is now very popular in many companies they are already adopted from devops to dev secops when we say dev secops it's also going to do security aspect moving to soft skills so i get feedback from students that it's good english or good speaking they don't say anything about leadership they do not say anything about any of the other soft skills so to give you the idea soft skills is not limited to only communication soft skills is also skill set how you collaborate with other people how you work with other people in general you also should be taking leads in certain aspects when you have some problem you may also ask certain questions you can ask crucial questions that also is thought provoking and also you should be good in collaboration and the problem solving it think out of the box that okay this problem may require certain different way of approach and so maybe people are thinking in a straight one direction and then you come up with okay maybe we can think in some some other way and that that solves the problem time management as a developer you need to manage your time because then you will not only be working si in silos you will be working in your team you are collaborating with your team member and if you are in a big company you have multiple teams and you need to adapt to the changes because we and nowadays in development people are working in agile and then the change is constant every time they have changing requirement every next sprint you will be 
having some changes people not every person can analyze everything in their brain once they see certain things in live in motion then they change their thought process and then then give you feedback that is where the adaptability you have to adapt you don't need to be sad that okay we worked so hard to deliver this and now they don't want it but it's good that you delivered only like for certain weeks of efforts and then 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 they are saying no right away and then so it's always good so don't be sad about it i have seen people they are very sad about it so i am just highlighting this point emotional intelligence creativity critical thinking and interpersonal skills so that's where i wanted to highlight that soft skill is not only limited to your communication skills but there are a lot to it so i have discussed few of them so you need to start improving on certain things wherever you can and you will be very good at your career there's some additional qualities that you can have start paying attention to details not only just write the code also pay attention to the code quality and the coding standards that your team is following or maybe if your team don't have any coding standards you can take leads have discussion follow some coding standards always be mindful of one thing that whatever repository or the code you are getting try to leave it better than you find it that's will lead you to a great heights in your career i'm assuring you focus on your continuous learning as the technology is always changing always evolving what you know from 5 years ago may not be now as relevant as it was when you were learning it so focus on your continuous improvement follow the trends in the market that is related to your tech stack for example you are a java developer and you are working on other java related technologies for example spring i've been in everything so maybe like you in between keep in touch what is the latest java version what are the latest java features that are coming into the new releases and focus on some interesting java uh, related topics follow some blogs watch some videos and probably maybe do some practice around it if you have time based on your like uh, level of career wherever you are you may have time and you may not manage to get the time but at least follow some trends and for example what are the latest spring boot versions what are the latest spring changes for example now spring 3 is out and people are still not aware of it it's like i'm not saying you need to learn everything in one day but at least you should be aware of what like let's say you are now getting involved in the discussions we were discussing in the analysis and design discussion and now they are discussing and you want you have to propose that okay which things to use and you are not aware of uh, like what's going on in the market then it will take a lot of time for you to learn and understand at that particular time and you will be very less confident in any of those meetings so it's always good to follow the continuous learning path uh, we already discussed time management we already discussed creativity creativity adaptability so start focusing on those kind of other skills as well focus on a teamwork team spirit once you become a team player you start helping others you will learn more i'm i'm telling you because once when you solve your own problem you may be in that particular ecosystem and you know what okay this probably will fix my problem but when people are approaching you for help within your team you listen you become a team player you try and see and help others so that you will by helping others you will start solving more problems and you will in future will have solution to all those problems and you don't have to face those problems on your own every time because you already helped others you already know how to solve them and once you start helping others once when you are in need they will be there for you to help so that's how because at the end you all are working within the team or within a company for the same goal and there are some interesting very interesting books i have highlighted in terms of your thought processing writing good quality code and how you are going to refactor your code how the large scale application from continuous delivery perspective if you like the video do subscribe do comment and also if you want any specific topic to be discussed in very detailed out of this uh, topic feel free to mention in comments i'll find time and have a video recorded in detail for any of the topic i hope this video gives you perspective in terms of broadening your thought process and moving out of that uh, coder or programmer silo good luck see you in the next video